Welcome back to Power Breakfast. Uh, my name is Michelle Morgan and today in studio I have Sergio Romero. He is the Vice President of the One Laptop Per Child Africa program. Now the Jubilee pledge to introduce one laptop to every child is expected to come at a cost of 53 billion shillings. Now the implementation is set to begin in January 2014 and it aims to create educational opportunities and to empower self-learning. But there have been some criticisms of the initiative, namely if it's a priority considering its cost. Well, today in studio, Sergio Romero is here. Thank you so much for joining us and a very warm welcome to Citizen Power Breakfast. Thank you. Well, thank you for inviting me. Absolutely. So this, uh, this, this One Laptop Per Child program really is in the public interest. And I think it would be fantastic to just start by clarifying and establishing what the One Laptop Per Child actually aims to achieve. Um, thank you very much for inviting me. Um, it's a pleasure to be here and in Kenya, a country that I started to love been many times. Actually, the One Laptop Per Child program is already in Kenya. We have already 10 schools. Uh, it's a private initiative that has been going on for the last two, three years. So in that sense, the country is already exposed. Uh, I think the key word, there are two key words that we have to use here. If we change in the world one laptop per child and we erase the, the, the word laptop with education, then it makes a better sense. This is bringing education to the kids. This is at primary level. We aim to work at the primary level. Difference between us and the rest, we are a non-profit organization uh, based out of the U.S. Uh, because of circumstances in the past, we have to develop our own laptop, which is meant to be for kids at primary level. It's rough, uh, it's water resistant, uh, it's in, it in the energy consumption, it can be powered by solar devices. Mm -hmm. And this is the device? This is the device. Mm -hmm. uh, it's created, like I said, at MIT for, for, for one laptop per child. It's rough, it's made it's make for kids. Durable. It's durable. Mm -hmm. We have projects in, in Africa for more than four years. Biggest the one that we have is in Rwanda. Mm -hmm. We already have 250,000 uh, kids in the program. And by f the next four years, uh, President Kagame, his vision and his country seem to have every kid in the country with a laptop. That's so are you selling them or are you giving them for free? No, no. There is a cost related because we're a nonprofit, so we don't make uh, any money out of this. We just pass the, the to manufacture this in our uh, manufacturing uh, plant in China, which is Quanta Computers, with the same company that makes Lenovo and some Apple products. Uh, but it's at, at cost. We don't make the software that is inside of here. It's at no cost. We don't charge for license. It's a Linux base. So uh, we do the training for free. Uh, we're different than the rest because we are an educational non-profit organization. This is not a market for us. This is a mission. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so maybe you could also just clarify um, with your mission and uh, giving a laptop to every child. How is that actually going to benefit children? Is it supposed to help with learning outcomes? What is, what is this whole One Laptop for Child initiative looking to actually achieve? We have realized that uh, children have the capability we just need to give them the opportunity and the resources. Uh, we are not intended and we will never intend to change the, the local curriculum. This is a new tool that brings to the local curriculum. We don't uh, change the curriculum. We don't so do anything tool. related to that. We just, on top of this, now the kid has a new tool to work with. Uh, now they can be creative because there are music uh, apps in the in the in the laptop. They can do science. They can do math. Uh, they can access internet if that is what the government decide to do. This is a Wi-Fi uh, device that has security on it, so that is not an internet open for to do whatever he wants. There is controls. We don't have a, the other is the security. We can kill the laptop if it is misplaced. There is not no value of this laptop in the market because there is nothing in, the, in this that, that can be used in something else. So we have seen in Africa, Latin America, other parts of the world, 50 countries we are already, that 
this is not an issue of being stolen or nothing like that, because there is no value for it. Okay. Now you have said you are in Kenyan schools, ten, ten schools. Yes, sir. That what what have you done to those schools? Just provide uh, tools. Provide the tools, provide the training to the teachers. So now the kids and the teachers work together with this new tool to develop all the things that they were not able to do before. Is that in conjunction with the Minister of Education? Uh, yes, what I have seen, what, I have, what, I, what we know is that, that local institutions that are bringing this private initiative have talked to the local uh, branches of Minister of Education to work with. Okay, I mean, I'd, I'd like to talk a little bit about implementation of the program, which is going to happen in January 2014. Yes. Now, is it going to happen in a sort of pilot phase, or are there going to be phases? How is this going to be outrolled? I am not aware of how the government, what you're telling me is what I have read in the news also. Uh, I am here just to, to support one of the projects that we have and to talk to some uh, government officials to see how they're going to do it. Um, it's already a proven concept, so there is no need to do a pilot. Uh, we are an educational, so it is just to try to work with all the different organizations within the government, curriculum, technology, the teachers, the schools, at every level, with the guideline of the central government to see how we're we going to roll over. So are you, as you speak now, in contact with the Minister of Education to talk about your project? Yes. That is the intention of my visit. I had a previous visit uh, two months ago. It was the beginning of the new presidency, so it was in the process of changing. But yes, the, the pro the my mission is to work with some local government officials to see how are we going to do it, or how if if it is going to be a tender, we will participate. Whatever is the rules that the government wants to do, we will participate in those, but we have to see. I don't know the rules. Mm. Now, uh, something that you mentioned before uh, when addressing implementation, a key thing is teacher training yes. um, <coughs> and teacher literacy with computers. Maybe you can talk about, you know, if you benchmark against other African countries, Rwanda, you mentioned uh, Senegal, other countries where you've rolled this out. How have you approached the teacher literacy side of having laptops introduced to primary schools? Very good question and very key question. The teachers is the center of the entire educational system. They are a very important person in the community. So we have to address how to train them before the, the technology is being introduced to the kids. So yes, we go to a process of training the teachers. They, so they, the teachers is the first one who has to get the laptop. Okay. So then they, with the training that we provide, they start uh, uh, introducing the technology to the, to the kids, but they're already being trained. So yes, the answer is that is a key issue. Fundamental issue is to work with the teachers, to train the teachers, so this is not a, a, a new device on them, this is not a threat on them. On the contrary, this is a new tool to better educate. This is about education. This is about bringing <coughs> new type of the next generation, a new type of next generation that are technology-wise, that has science, math, start developing robotics. We have seen in Rwanda uh, working with robotics, developing new tools, developing art. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm curious to look at uh, the content of what you actually find on this computer and the usability of how the kids will interact with it. Is it in line with the 844 curriculum or is it sort of open source content? What is the actual content within the device that is going to be delivered to the children? We have a, a, an application software inside of the laptop that is called Sugar and it has develop, been developed for kids. It has to programming, music, everything that you want, English, uh, interaction with the computer, everything. But that doesn't mean we have to work with the local governments to, uh, to take the curriculum and put it into the system. Whatever curriculum do you have in the local uh, schools, we have to put it in the laptop so we are not changing the curriculum. It's the curriculum who is... So yes, we have to talk to the curriculum authorities here how to do download all the, curri uh, the curriculum into the laptop so the, com the continue of the education is exactly the same as it has been before, but now with new tools. If they want to use the software that we have, fine, they're using it. In some countries, they use some of the applications for a specific reason, math, science, music, but they also use their own applications being developed by them.
Mm -hmm. Now, uh, obviously, this is an electronic device, um, and any of us who have any form of electronic device, a laptop or or a tablet or whatever it is, there's going to be maintenance problems, repair issues. How is that going to be factored in when you're giving uh, one laptop to every child, say, in very remote areas? Uh, how is the sort of maintenance side of this initiative going to be facilitated? In two, first of all, you mentioned about the, the electricity consumption. This is the, the machine in the world that has the less power consumption in the world, less than two watts. So this is a device that knows, we know that that's an issue, not only in Africa, in many remote areas of Latin America, Africa, Asia. So we have developed a machine that is, is energy uh, aware of what's going on. The Which means what? Which means does it need energy at all? No, they need to be charged somehow, solar or electricity or... And I think the Jubilee's pledge was that they were going to be solar powered because in, in a Kenyan context, I think it's important to consider the fact that, let's say in rural areas, there might not be um, electricity supply. So is that something that would be factored into the design, it being solar powered? Uh, I don't know if that is what the government is going to request, but if it is requested, we have the solution for as a solar, yes. Uh -huh. Actually, last night I was watching a program in the Kenyan TV about energy, energy problems in Africa. It was a guy from, a person from Senegal, uh, from Sierra Leone, about energy. So yes, there are local s energy solutions that have to be implemented in order to, which is one of the benefits that this program uh, will bring. Bringing energy to the schools, connectivity to the schools. A lot of things happen besides the laptop that are bringing development to the communities. A community awareness, w the community working with the school to work with the project. Mm -hmm. But what about repair, let's say their device? It is going to uh, happen like any other device. Specifically, we have seen that the keyboard and probably the screen will have damage over the years because of usage care. kids are mm -hmm. kids. So there is a maintenance program that we put uh, with the project that in case that something happened, we immediately go and fix it. It's very easy. This is a 20, 25 parts laptop. It's not a, it's just the screws. We are not, a, a, it's very easy to change. So yes, there is a maintenance project, that a program that we have to put on top of the p educational program in order to avoid those problems. Means what? You will, you will train technicians? Yes. Or teachers, those will the, the maintenance will be done by teachers or people from out teaching? No. Actually, there are some countries that the kids itself have been able to fix some of the uh, more simple ways of, of changing. But there are others that, yes, we, loc we train local uh, organizations that can fix the laptop, which is very easy, and they do the changes, or <coughs> we train other companies to do the change. But yes. Mm -hmm. What is the typical life, um, life period of, of this sort of a laptop? Two, three years, what's? Well, I can only tell you that uh, the longest project right now, it's been run for five years, mm -hmm. or six years, something and the laptops are still working. They're still working five years on. Yeah, we have seen, you can go to countries in like Rwanda, like Mozambique, that the project has been for four years, and you go to the schools and the laptop is still working, is still functionally, because it was made to be rough, to take that type of, mm -hmm. of environments. What about the sustainability of it? So say, say it lasts three years, or five years, and then it breaks down. You know, will that same child be entitled to another laptop, or is it just you know a fantastic euphoric s standard one sort of uh, entitlement? And after that, it's like, well, you know, tough. Uh, no very more. key question. Sustainability is about if the laptop is not working, then it uh, have to be fixed, mm -hmm. or when the kid leaves primary level and moves to secondary level, he leaves the laptop behind for another kid that is going into the system. So we have seen several flavors of what is going to happen at the primary level. Remember, we work at primary level. Right. This is not a computer for secondary level. Mm -hmm. It's not meant to be at that level. This is for primary level. So yes, it has to be or either repair, refurbish, or put it again to the system. And okay, now something that you mentioned um, uh, a little bit earlier was that there isn't really a risk 